Electric cars, put aside whatever you may think of them, wow, they can be fast. But put even the best one around a corner and they get to be a bit of a mess. And the reason for this conundrum is simple, batteries weigh too much. And if we're being honest with one another, the all too often promises of lower weight battery technology is years from reality. But even knowing all that, there may be a solution in putting a go fast EV around a corner. Now, I'll tell you, it's complicated and it's from a rather unlikely source. Enter the Ionic 5. Hyundai plans to use this as the building block for a go-fast electric car in the U.S. Technically, it's not a car, it's a crossover. So what they've done here is they've taken the electric motor out, they throw it in the trash, they take the inverter, they throw that in the trash, and then they make it faster. When I say faster, it's like the Kia EV6 GT, where what they're doing is making it 600 horsepower. Well, there's a battery, 84 kilowatt hours, which is bigger. So yeah, it still charges 10 to 80% in 20 minutes, technically 18 at 235 kilowatts on DC or 10.9 on AC. So now you've made the battery heavier in an already heavy car. How do you control it? Uh, what they've done is they've made a one-speed transmission that has gear changes. In reality, what they're doing is they're changing the torque profiles so you blip the torque to mimic gear changes of an eight-speed DCT, say, an Elantra N. That's what you and I have to learn to see if it works today. Now, in terms of performance, 0 to 60, it is a fast car, 3.25 seconds, and VMAX, 162 miles an hour. Now, before we determine if this is a gimmick or if it works on a track, a favor. You know what I'm going to ask here? If you see value in these episodes, do all the YouTube things, subscribe, notifications, like, but most importantly, share these episodes with your friends on your socials. Why? You need to tell the algorithm you like these episodes so it shares it with more people so you get more episodes. It may be fast, but it is still electric. 4,861 pounds, or depending on express weights, measures 2,204 kilograms. Uh, with that, end mode. Oh, hey now. Go! Oh, that is... Yes, it is fast! So as you and I begin our first lap, some parameters. Uh, we're going to let the car do all the work here, meaning we're doing this in end mode and let the engineers sort out all the gear change, power delivery, all of that kind of stuff. The car, man, it is noticeably fast. And what's fascinating about this, it feels very different, at least the power delivery from the Kia EV6 GT. There's a lot, lot of moving parts going on here. More parameters have been changed in this than over on the Kia side. And as such, it just, it feels more immediate. It feels, I hate to say it, it feels like a car. Now, granted, does it feel like a gas car? We'll get to that. So I've found the pornography. So let's start where everything stops. And that would be the brakes. We've learned this thing, it is not lightweight, about 5,000 pounds, so the brakes kind of need to be serious, even more important because of where the weight is in this car. So up front, it's about 16-inch diameter rotors. To give you an idea, like 911 turbos, that's kind of what they have, a little bit more, but this is an unusual size because it's so large. Give you an idea when you look at the rotor itself and vent it in the front. Now in the back, it's not as exciting, 14.2 inches because it's an EV and if you think most people are going to use these things around town you're not using the brakes as much here as you are in a gasoline car. Now speaking of the brakes the calipers monoblock and four pistons you can get an idea of what the pads look like here. Then the piece de resistance of the naked bits a wheel that's kind of like an erector set. So they're fitted with 21 inch wheels and basically it's a very elaborate five spoke wheel, but it doesn't look like that. And the reason why an electric car, it's all about getting air around the car efficiently. So like in the Onyx 6, that has a coefficient of drag of something like 0.22, which gives it a much higher range than a comparable Onyx 5. Well, this, you're gonna lose range because you have super wide tires and they're bigger. 
But what they do to make up some efficiency is close off the air from getting into the brakes and bring only the air they need to cool the brakes. And to do that, they have these inserts in the five spoke wheel. So basically when you're on the track, you do this. If you want to dress it up a bit more, you can pull this out. So apparently menus are a huge deal here, a bigger deal than any other car that I've experienced, probably a bigger deal than in your home computer. Let's start with the drive mode, which is up here on the steering wheel. That changes, say, eco to normal or to sport or back to eco to extend the range, which here, not great, 221 miles of range according to the U.S. government. And then really it's about this, the N mode, and that is like on AMGs, we have a controller down here. And that changes the graphics of the screen. So it goes to analog, as well as these cool Euro style fonts of numbers. And that brings us over to the right controller where we can switch on and off the audio integration of the vehicle, basically adding a soundtrack to an electric car. That works in conjunction with the paddle shifters back here and the way in which you engage the transmission. You press and hold here, or you press and hold to get out of it. And then there is this one here, N Grin Boost Mode. And basically what this does is give you the overboost. Now we have to get to the star of the menu controller here, which is the N Mode in the center screen. This gives us two tranches of controllers, battery and track. There's actually one for distribution as well, but let's start with battery. We can understand the state of charge. Let's say I go into track mode here. It tells me the suitable temperature of the battery. And also in drag mode, let's say for the sake of discussion, I wanna to go to a drag strip with my electric car. And then over here, I have way more parameters. I can change the torque distribution, uh, one pedal mode, but it's more for performance rather than efficiency. And then there's an end race mode and an end drift optimizer. So let's say for the sake of discussion, you want to drift your electric car. Now, admittedly, we're at the point of oversaturation of menus. However, there is one last party trick and that is the end torque distribution. And this is where you get to override the engineers from Seoul. Basically, you can send the torque wherever you want it. Basically, you're dictating how much torque goes to the front or the back wheels. Okay, so as we get to the corkscrew, let's engage this whole transmission thing. Now we are in five, let's downshift, that's four, that's three, let's see if we can go down to two. Actually, wow, it'll let me downshift to two, going through the famous corkscrew. <laughs> this is magnificent. My first time driving the track. Oh, we just bounced off the red line in an electric car. Who would have thunk? And I can't think of a better place to do it. Then Laguna Seca, this is my first time driving the track since it has been repaved. What a magnificent place. I can't believe it. The gimmick actually works. This isn't a gimmick. Twice now, well, there we go, did the downshift, but twice it actually bounced off the red line. Now, something fascinating about this, this, it's not a gimmick, and here's why. Not that it makes you feel like it's a gas car, you can control the weight. That's the entire point. Like here we are, this turn in a car that's 5,000 pounds that has a tall center of gravity. This should be a problem. Let's look where we want to go. Let's look at that cone over there and get into this turn. And I'm balancing the weight in faux second gear. Let's try it again. Break, break, break. I'm down to second gear. And okay, I felt the weight a little bit there, but this, this really is all about where do you want to put such a tall, heavy car on a racetrack? That's what's going on. God, this is actually quite good. I am shocked. Yes, it is indeed that time again to play your favorite game on the options game with today's contestant, a go fast electric car. But really, rather than playing the game, we have to determine how much it costs to make an electric car go fast and still have composure, basically not be a mess. Uh, and there we have to understand the base cost of a regular Ionic 5, which is about $42,000. But that is the rear wheel drive car. What you are looking at is all wheel drive. That's the only way it comes. So the most basic all wheel drive Ionic 5, that is just a hair under $50,000. Which brings us to the base price of this, $66,000. 
So put another way, to make a very heavy car that has an electric propulsion system go around a track and not be a sniveling mess, it'll cost you $16,000. Uh, then there are options, actually very few. It's basically the color. A premium color will cost $470. There is a matte blue, that's an additional $1,000. And then there is the destination and handling. These are made in Ulsan, Korea, $1,395. That brings us to a car, yes, you guessed it, 70 grand for a Hyundai. So, Am I fussed that a Hyundai is 70 grand? No. So let's look at this a completely different way. The question that's in front of us, and it's a big one for car people, is the world ready to pay an extra 16 to 20 grand for a go-fast electric car to do so competently? And that's completely separate from whether it has a brand or not. Okay, let's try this red line thing again. I'm in fourth. Downshift, oh, whoa, denied downshift. Let's try this again. Oh, denied downshift again. It, they have program in imperfection. I mean, you gotta take your hat off to, to engineers that say, you know what, life ain't perfect, so we're gonna bring imperfection back into our sort of perfect power delivery. Uh, there's something else going on here. Uh, notice the seats. Uh, I don't know if it's actually Recaro branded. I wouldn't be shocked if it is. And yeah, there's more support. It feels better. But this aids to the way the car drives. This is really quite a transformation. Like I would go so far as to saying this is probably now the most fun electric car that I have driven uh, for a long while. Remember, we drove the Taycan. That was the best. And then the i4, the cheap one. Uh, because that one you could steer with your right foot. This you really can steer with your right foot. This is more, the limits are so much higher. There's so much more going on here. I will say everything is not puppy dogs and roses. This whole programming in imperfection, I think at certain points they've taken it beyond the line. Like the whole torque blip where you want to control the torque. The um, the push, like the feel is almost, it's too gamey, it's too gimmicky. Maybe a little bit less push chain. Oh, we just hit the red line again. We're doing, I'm kind of impressed how imperfect it is. It feels more human. That's really what this is. It's a more human EV. So this has been one of our most profound learning experiences in a while, and I'll tell you why. Remember that discussion we had with the chief engineer of Cadillac, Tony Roma? He was very honest. He said, look, we're not doing a performance electric car for a while because we don't know what that means. We don't know the attributes that go into making an electric car a performance car. So we're going to hold off on V for a while. Now that I've spent some time with Taycans, BMWs, fast Kias, and this, I've learned it's not about going fast. It's about controlling the car and actually adding the sound back in the car. I know it sounds counterintuitive, but perhaps car guys like you and I aren't ready to have a go fast car that is silent. So making this very simple, the answer to Tony's question was adding back in all the senses to the driving experience for a go fast electric car. And it's not just the driver at this point. The folks at Hyundai are planning on adding an amplification to a single car series with these things where they're gonna offer 10 different sounds that the spectators will hear outside the car and the way to get the sound is by qualifying or racing. So obviously the best sound, or at least the choice of the best sound, goes to those who qualify first and then cascades down from there. We'll talk more about that with Till who runs N for Hyundai in a coming episode. And that brings us to the wish list. And here, like in the i5 episode, I'm going to ask the manufacturer to not do something. I know there is going to be the temptation to come out with a version that's got 1200 horsepower. Be like a sapphire. We don't want that. What we want you to do is take the money you're gonna do in the development of that and figure out 
battery technology. Invest it in startups, get it to commercialization faster to take a thousand pounds out of this car. Because even with all the things we've learned that work well in this car, you still need to take a thousand pounds out of it for people to take these things seriously on a track, but I am just one man. This is the point of the episode that I turn around to you guys to opine in the comments below or via our social media, Moto Man TV All Word, Moto Man TV All Word, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. And with that, if you got value out of this episode, I would highly suggest you check out the episode with this car's cousin, the Kia EV6 GT. We also shot that on a track in Las Vegas. You can see that episode here. Until I see you in the next episode, bis später.